Hello, zombies. Come on, get a grip. Oh, it's not quite the same shade. Whoops. I'm stressed. I don't feel well. I can't tell if it's just the year, the things in my life, or if it's because in this video, Peter, my best friend, will be ruining all my favorite movies for me with facts I never knew about them. It's probably a combo. While he does that, I am going to be turning myself into a character from one of my favorite movies, and it's gonna be Peter's job to figure out who it is. He's smirking over there. He can't wait to do this. I can just feel it. He has never wanted to do a video more in his entire life than to see me suffer with all his cinephile facts. Isn't that right, Peter? No, I want to do the water pumps more. Did you? Yeah. Uh, was it everything you dreamt? Yes, absolutely. That was pretty great. If you haven't seen that video. Thanks, Peter. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. It's amazing. So I'm gonna have you join me. You're gonna sit next to me and ruin my life. Ruin me, Peter. All right, let's do it. Great. By the way, thank you to today's sponsor who is so appropriate because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a drink throughout this. Our sponsor is Bright Sellers. Let me tell you about them. Bright Sellers is a wine subscription service that matches you to wines from all over the world and then delivers them directly to your door. I've really struggled to figure out which kinds of wines I like in the past. Go to a bar, they pick out a yummy one. Pick out one at the store for myself, hate it, no clue what I'm doing don't know what to look for. I've actually even tried another wine subscription service years before this one and it still just didn't get it right. But Bright Sellers is different. They use a quick seven question non-wine snobby quiz to gather your taste preferences and match you to wines you're guaranteed to like. Truly. Their delight guarantee means if you don't love a bottle in your shipment, they'll send you a replacement in your next box. I love that Bright Sellers also provides you with wine education cards for each bottle so you can start to learn more about your own preferences and how to make your classy wine time even more enjoyable. So if this sounds like something you or someone you know would enjoy, I have cheers worthy news for you. Bright Sellers is giving Zombies 50% off their first six bottle box. All you need to do is follow the link in the description to take the quiz and get started. What, did you see that? Well, it's after the ad now, but before the ad, Peter did the thing. He did the transition. Wow. I've learned a thing or two. I feel like you're pumping me up just in time to tear me down. Yeah, gas me up. That's yeah. Do the kids say that? Yeah. Please confirm. Join me. I'm so scared. Are we gonna fit in this frame together? Oh yeah. Why do we look dead? <laughs> I don't know. Is it the color profile? I hope. Honestly, I was thinking about how like I was tan like a month ago and then the fire started and the heat wave and everything and I stopped going outside for like a solid month and now I'm not tan. You don't look pasty. You're next mm. to me. I mean, well. And I'm tan right now. Yeah. It's true. Mine is this part of me. Okay, so the yeah. inside of the arm is just whiter. Yeah. Ah, take that. Right. No one give me shit. <laughs> Can I curse in this video? Braid sellers, are you okay with that? Please confirm. Can I have one? Yeah while he walks away and literally goes to get wine. He got distracted petting creature, I lie. All right, move it along. I'm gonna whisper to you, I have a secret. I don't want him to hear it until later, but I have four special things, a beard, a mustache, under eye bags, and the last thing is a slit throat. Do you know who that is? If you wanna know who that is, then keep listening. If you don't wanna know who that is, then look away now. I'm gonna hide it on the screen somewhere. It is. So either you're playing along with Peter or playing along with me. I swear he's gonna get it so fast though, so it doesn't even matter. You're out of frame, Peter. Oh, my phone's great camera guy. Jesus, Peter, get it together. Listen, I'm trying. Are you just more in the center of the frame than I am? Is your first time on camera? No. Go watch the time you turned me into a thing that's a surprise. Mm -hmm. Get in the frame, Peter. That's what I mean. You're literally. You well, you have a big ass laptop on your lap. I know. I need it. This laptop. is literally all of the facts. I thought you know all the facts by heart, no. in memory, because you're a freak. If you guys missed the story of why we're doing this video, then you should go watch my Miss Doubtfire video because why have you not watched it? Yes. It's great, first of all. Second of all, what happened is I unfortunately saw a tweet that upset me very much where Peter revealed that Billy Zane's hair in Titanic is a wig. And that is a movie that I thought I knew everything about. And I thought that Billy Zane in Titanic was the perfect man growing up. And not that there's anything wrong with wigs, obviously, but I had no idea. And it just shooketh me to my core. I had a little mini freak out and people thought that was hilarious enough that they wanted Peter to ruin all of my favorite movies for me. I honestly 
honestly don't know if any of these will do that because I think that that was like the perfect storm of your childhood. So we got the worst out of the way. Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, good. Okay. Spoiler warning for all of the movies we are going to talk about, just in case, maybe I'll like put them on the screen as I talk. Watch out. We already experienced a spoiler together so far when you were out of the room, so they're used to it by now. Did you like read my laptop? What's on your laptop, Peter? The facts. Oh, no, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you better drink that wine. I'll start like easy. <laughs> when I laugh, my eyes like gluing to itself because I'm laughing and I have glue right here. It's cracking me up. Sorry, continue. So Mikey sent me a list of her like favorite movies or like a bunch of movies that she's seen a million times. Yes, no. I would like to stress that part, okay? So like if a walk to remember comes up, don't at me, but I have seen it approximately 300 times. That wasn't on the list. Oh. <laughs> All right, go Sorry. ahead. I'm ready. Okay. The Village. Yes! Oh, yeah. Start me off with heartache right away. I'm ready to be hurt. Ashton Kutcher was originally cast as Noah, but <laughs> dropped out due to scheduling conflicts. Oh, thank God. No offense! Okay. This is gonna be full of <laughs> stuff like that, isn't it? No offense to Ashton Kutcher. It's not that I can't picture Noah in a trucker hat. It's just that I think Adrian Brody did such a good job that I can't imagine anyone else doing it. If you haven't seen The Village, watch it! because I will eventually do a film review on it. Not yet, because I also am going to have to make myself into those we don't speak of, which if you've seen it, you know is going to be a challenge, but someday I will review that film. It is one of my favorite films ever. Don't get me started. I wasn't going to. The next one is Inception. Okay, Inception has been one of those films that if someone asks me what my top five favorite movies is, it's always in the top five. Well, probably since it came out, so a decade. Hit me. Okay, Michael Caine's. Michael Caine birth name is Maurice Minklewhite. Who? Minklewhite? Mm -hmm. Minklewhite. I've literally never heard that last name in my life. If someone told me to make up the most random last name in the entire world, I still wouldn't have thought of that. Maurice Minklewhite? That could have been a famous name. Yeah, Maurice Minklewhite. And he changed it to just Michael Kine? Yeah. Wow. If you guys want to know how to say Michael Caine and sound like Michael Caine, just say my cocaine. I literally almost said that exact same thing. My cocaine. My cocaine. Just make it a little more throaty. That's what <laughs> he said. I don't think that's going to do what I want it to do. So <laughs> nope. I think I'm just going to ignore this piece of it. We're going rogue. <laughs> okay. Never mind. It's a part of me now. Are you supposed to be old? <gasps> I felt like a little leaf in the yeah. fall. It was very like forest going. Yeah. <laughs> Are my teeth just gonna get more and more purple as this goes? Yes. Okay. Embrace it. There's some stuff that I assume you know, but we're doing Titanic. All right. The drawings of Rose were done by James Cameron. I did know that. Okay. Yes. I thought so. Did you know that there is an alternate ending to Titanic? Wait, I mean, there's unfortunately only one ending to Titanic. Wait, there's a there's a video of it? Yeah, there's what? an ending. What? Wait, is this, hold on, is this like an official thing? Is this a parody? Are you, I can't. This is I, a real ending. The James cut? James. <laughs> We're on a first name basis. Jim. People I feel Jim. lightheaded thinking about what I'm about to watch. Honestly, I actually feel lightheaded. Not sure if I'm gonna pass out. Please catch me if I do. This is all the same so far. Mm -hmm. Jesus! What? You had it the entire time? <laughs> Look, Rose, I don't know what to say to a woman who tries to jump off the Titanic when it's not sinking and then jumps back on when it is. <laughs> Think about this for a second. I'm so glad James Cameron thought about this for a second. Yes. <laughs> There's so much happening. There's way too much. Yeah. This ended up being a 30 second scene. Yeah. Wow, this is the most 90s thing. I was just thinking that. <laughs> I was just like, this is so late 90s. Jesus, no. That really sucks, lady. <laughs> That's a cute moment, mm -hmm. but we didn't need it. Okay, now it's too much. So moving on from that. I don't know if I'm ready to yet. <laughs> oh, you mean, I thought you were talking about the video. You just mean like spiritual. Like, yeah. Yeah, got it. American Psycho. Yay! 
me. Christian Bale explained that he drew inspiration from Tom Cruise because Tom Cruise's very intense friendliness with nothing behind the eyes. Ugh, that's some serious shade. Yeah. I'm gonna have to watch more Tom Cruise to see if I see it now. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I need scissors. Gotta give my mustache a little trim, you know? Mm-hmm, as one does. It, it looks like you're gonna be Colonel Sanders from those KFC commercials. It's my favorite movie. Very uncomfortable, but mm. we're gonna do it. The Exorcist. Ooh! I know some things about this film, so let's see. Did you know that there was a real serial killer on the crew during the arteriogram, right? When she does the heart thing? Sure. Sure. sure, I think that's how you say it. They used a real medical crew, right? Because okay. they went to go see one really performed oh and they, they wanted it to be so accurate right. that they just used the real okay. people to do a fake version of it. One of the people that was in that crew was a serial killer. Wow. Oh my God. So it's just like an basically who? a glorified actor. Who? Paul Bateson? That guy. Oh my God. How many it's people did he kill? He, I believe, is connected to six male victims in a series of bag murders where I think he chopped them up and put them in bags. Six? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Well, you know what they say. They say that that film set was super cursed because lots of people died, but I had never heard that there was a serial killer mm -hmm. in our midst. I assume they found out after. Yes. All right, this one might get you. I'm not trying to like gas it up as the kids say. Contortionist Linda R. Hager was hired to perform the famous spider walk scene, which mm -hmm. I know holds a special place in your heart. Yes, for those of you who don't know that special place in my heart, the spider walk scene down the stairs in The Exorcist is the only time I can ever remember turning a movie off because I had had enough and I waited another day or two to finish the movie. I was 11 at the time to be fair but it is the only time it has happened. Did you know that that spider walk was not in the original movie? It was added in 2000. 2000? Yes. It took 30 years for them to add it. But they shot it in the 70s? Yes. And they didn't think that it looked good because they couldn't remove the wires properly. Yeah, you can see the wires actually like tugging on her dress in certain parts. I mean, it definitely does give it away, but if you're not expecting it, it's really, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. Well, and if you're 11. They digitally removed the wires and they added the scene back in Whoa. for the extended 2000 version. Oh, once they have the technology to do it. Wow, cool. Yeah. I like that. It's a good fact. Thank you. All right, so while I was researching, I fell down a rabbit hole about Scream, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Me too. Also yours. And I got so into it that I honestly felt like I was doing a mini armchair detective. Name pending. <laughs> Thank you. But this is this is like a little hard to keep track of, so I'm gonna try my best to do this justice because this is like a 20 something year story that I'm gonna try to condense down to like the most basic facts, okay? Oh boy. So I'm gonna have actual wrinkles by the time we're done. Yes. Okay. So Ghostface, one of the most famous iconic horror movie things ever was in world a thing you could buy at a store. I knew that. Mm -hmm. In real life, that was also true. Mm -hmm. So it created a like giant headache for the studio. Why? Because they needed the rights to- They didn't get it first? No, oh. which is part of oh. what we're gonna talk about. Oh. Okay, so the mask design has been disputed for 20 years with multiple people saying that they designed Ghostface. Oh, I'm trying to take credit. no, <laughs> I okay. see, I see. So the mask, <laughs> from what I can tell, and I'm gonna say like allegedly, I think that makes it legally okay. There's a man named Lauren Githins, who is a SFX artist, he went to a Halloween costume party with other SFX people wearing this. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is supposed to be 1990. So then he was asked to create a company called Ghost Factory with Tony Gardner, who was another SFX person. And they created the Ghost Factory, which had the logo that looks like the Scream logo. Yes. Okay. They made a kit called a Ghost Maker. It looks an awful lot like, like Scream. Scream Ghost. Okay. okay. They went to Chicago for a convention and got no offers. Okay. Githin leaves LA, leaves the industry. Oh, I can tell this is not going anywhere good. And then two years later, sees a knockoff being made by Fun World. Okay. 
right? Which is the company that currently owns the rights. Already question, because it is a very simple design. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that maybe two different people genuinely had two different ideas, or is there some kind of thing that shows that like their paths crossed and they would have known about? It's possible, legally speaking, that Fun World, which is one of the biggest companies in this industry, mm -hmm. didn't see this at the Chicago Fair. But give me the tape. Fun World makes a version and. An artist named Bridget Sleetherton, sorry, said that she created Ghostface as part of a series called Fantastic Face. It was known as the Peanut-Eyed Ghost. Okay. She said that she made it in 1991, which was already after. But her boss and Fun World owner, Alan Geller, said that he designed Ghostface and is making a documentary to prove it. Okay, question. Did all of this start after Scream became a thing? Like, did anyone want to claim this face until Scream happened? I'm glad you asked. Oh, great. So, when they were making Scream, Marion Magdalena, who's one of the producers of Scream, was on a location scout and found the Fun World version of the mask on the location. And that's why they decided to use it for the movie. So she shows it to Wes Craven. He says he loves it. They reach out to Fun World and Fun World asks for too much money. So Wes Craven tells the production to make their own knockoff of the knockoff from Fun World. Yeah, because that's totally gonna, okay. Okay? Right. And they filmed two scenes using the knockoff. Okay. So Fun World then lowered their price and they shot the rest of the movie with the Fun World version. So okay. like in Dead by Daylight, that is licensed by Fun World. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So everyone you see now is licensed by Fun World. Following. These are photos from Scream in which the knockoff is still in the movie. Yeah. And then these are pickup shots that were edited in. So in the first scene of Scream, two different versions of Ghostface appear. Never noticed that. And now you never will not notice it. Yeah, that so, one looks goofy. Yeah. So my hope is that I just ruined Scream forever for you. <laughs> that you literally can never not see. I'll never not see it again. That there are that two is true. different Ghostface. Very educational, Peter. Good job. Thank you. All right, I think I'm ready for my mistake. I'm gonna pee. Okay. Peter, did you really think you were doing something with that? Did you really think? This is so much better than the other design. I was upset as a kid because I had never watched Scream, but every freaking Halloween, every boy wore this. And I was like, this is the dumbest design for a movie. Like it's not scary at all. It looks cheap. I didn't realize that that was like the whole shtick in the movie because I hadn't seen the movie until I was like 25 or something ridiculous. Because we were just talking about Tony Gardner, we're going to go to Happy Death Day. The Bayfield University baby killer costume was designed by Tony Gardner. Interesting. Full circle. Another mask that's on my wall. If you guys haven't seen my very iconic baby face dance, I will leave it here. Although I'm pretty sure it has to be without sound because copyright, so enjoy it silently. I think it's creepier that way. Totally. You probably already know this, but the Michael Myers mask. Yes, William Shatner. Is it William Shatner? Yes. Painted white. <laughs> Amazing. And it was bought for $1.98. <laughs> oh my god. One of the most famous things in film history. I think the lesson and the moral of this video is that if you have a good idea for a horror mask, don't just give it up. Yeah. These things are worth a lot of money eventually. Cabin in the Woods. Yay! Another one of my favorites. That is one of the best horror movies ever, period. That's very itchy. I hate it. You're looking like Albert Einstein right now. I am. Do the... Like it. I do! Wow. Well, you guessed it. That's who I am. Fun fact, I just learned this literally yesterday. Yeah, he wanted to ruin the shot for the paparazzi, so oh. he stuck his tongue out. And of course, that's like now like a meme. The most famous. Yeah. That really backfired. Yeah. The film was shelved due to studio bankruptcy. No. And even director Drew Goddard and producer Joss Whedon had little faith in it until Lionsgate saw the finished film, loved it, picked it up, and released it. Good job, Lionsgate. We stand Lionsgate hardcore here. Do you know why? It was because Chris Hemsworth got Thor. That was so, why? Yeah. I mean, thanks, Chris, yeah. for giving us such a good movie, but it's sad that that's why. And rippling muscles. Speaking of rippling muscles, oh. He's a pro. During the lake scene, the only student not to jump into the lake is Marty, who remains fully clothed on the dock. This is partially due to Franz Krantz noticeably being in good, if not better shape than the other male students. In the commentary for the film, the writers joke that he was ripped like muscular Jesus. <laughs> 
and assert that if Marty was shown being fit, it would ruin the character. Wow, that's true, it would have ruined it. He couldn't have been like stoner hippie, I don't care vibe. Yeah, it's a great look. That's a great fact. Thank you. Wolf of Wall Street. Yay. Matthew McConaughey's chest beating was Leonardo DiCaprio's idea. He saw McConaughey beating his chest to relax himself before shooting and proposed to include it in the film. Which is like- I'm not surprised at all. Like literally the most Matthew McConaughey story yeah. in the world is that he actually beats his chest like that. All right, all right, all right. Leonardo DiCaprio was once a break dancer and almost left his acting career to pursue it. He won second place in a German break dancing contest when he was young. What? And his, That's so random. His nickname is The Noodle. Oh. That's a nickname guys want. The noodle. Oh, well, Leo. So when he does like this, like the dancing oh. scene Wall Street, it's because he was literally just break dancer. Oh and my just, God, like, he brought back his nickname. Did it on the fly. Hey, you didn't even react to my freaking neck. Do you like it? Yeah, is it like a knife slash? Mm -hmm. Kind of look like Spencer making you a turkey. True. I'd like to forget. I'm sure you all would too. This is a quick one. Devil Wears Prada. Yes! On the first day of filming, Meryl Streep told Anne Hathaway, I think you're perfect for the role, and I'm so happy we're going to be working together. Then she paused and followed it up with, that's the last nice thing I'll say to you. Oh. And it was. Is she a method actor? I mean, but, that sounds method acting. Yeah, it's pretty method acting. But. Oh my god. She is the scariest woman yeah. in that movie. She's the best. She made me afraid of Cerulean forever. Did I ever tell you that like I've only auditioned for like one thing as an adult, and it was opposite Meryl Streep? Excuse me? No, Peter, you've never told me that. Oh. Please share with the class. So a friend of mine was going to an open call in New York and asked me to go with him. And it was for the movie It's Complicated with Meryl Streep and Alec Baldwin. I read for like a dorky role and I did the reading and then I left and I was waiting for my friend and they were like, hey, would you want to read for a different role? So they pulled me back in. You got an immediate call yeah. back for a movie opposite Meryl Streep. So they brought me in. I was supposed to play like a freshman or a sophomore coming back from college the first year. And the reader goes, I'll I'll be reading for Meryl. And he said it, and my brain was like, what? And then we just went, and I tanked it. Oh, no. Because once I realized realize? what I was actually reading oh for. Oh, my God, no. It, and I, yeah, I always joked that if I had done that, I would have retired from acting after. I would have oh, done smart. one thing opposite Meryl Streep and then just never <laughs> acted again. Very smart. Yeah. I like that. Well, wow, and now this isn't sticky. Are you kidding me? Looks like it's sticky. Oh, no. It's not. After I waited, I'm gonna have to use spirit gum. I don't wanna use spirit gum, but I'm gonna have to. We need the beer. We're gonna throw a curveball. Mr. Robot. Yeah! Okay, not a movie, but I am here for it. Mr. Robot is my favorite TV show. And I'm sorry for people who follow me on Instagram and Twitter because you hear it so often. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep saying it until every single one of you has watched it. It's a phenomenal show. Season two is a little slow. Get through it, I promise it's worth it. It sets up the cards to fall for the next two seasons. It's amazing. It's so good, it's so good! You were saying. Mr. Robot was originally a movie. Yeah. With the first season being the first act of the film. Yeah, I knew that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the original scripted pilot, Darlene was named Marlene. Why did they change it to Darlene? I don't know. That's funny. Can you imagine if it was just Marlene? Sure. But I like Darlene. Good switch. Quirty was a cat. Quirty's a beta fish. For those of you who still haven't watched it, what are you doing? I just told you two seconds ago to watch it. You haven't watched it? You were supposed to pause the video, watch four seasons of Mr. Robot, and then come back, because I don't want anything to get spoiled for you. Five seasons? Four. How dare you? It's four. Don't you dare Google it. It's four. What are you going to give me when it's four? It's four seasons. Did they split one? No! This isn't Breaking Bad, which is my other favorite show. Speaking of Breaking Bad, the highest rated episode of Breaking Bad. Wait, ooh, ooh, ooh. Is it Ozymandias? Yeah! Oh, she still got it. I clipped the audio real bad there, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And the lowest rated episode of Breaking Ooh, The Fly! Yes. Yeah! Why which, do I know that? I love The Fly. Which is dumb. The Fly's great. And it's also directed by Ryan Johnson. Are both directed by Ryan Johnson. Oh! That was, that's right, I knew that too. That was but. the fact. The Look Fly is great. I know my favorite TV shows. I don't mess around with my favorite TV shows, although I did not know about Marlene, so. Did you know, speaking of, then the original pilot, Jesse Pinkman, was named Marion Allen Dupree. That's some Michael Caine shit. I feel like I've heard Dupree before, but I don't remember the rest of the name. Yeah, well, he was supposed to be, like, referred to as Dupree. Ew, hate it. You know, minus the old part and the, you know, slit throat part, I look like my dad. I was thinking the same thing <laughs> just now. Hey, Dad, if you're watching, mm -hmm. I always wanted to know what you look like without a beard and a mustache. And it turns out I just needed to figure out what I look like with a beard and a mustache to know if I actually look like you. And it turns out, minus, you know, the rest, that's you. Yeah, that that's is. That's you right there. 
Minus the nose ring, but yeah. True. Sure. See you, Dad. This is a fact that might just ruin a movie for you, which I guess is the point. Which movie? Requiem for a Dream. Oh no. Each time after the drugs are used, it cuts to a shot of an eye with a pupil dilating. While this would be true for a speed type drug like Sarah was using, for heroin, the exact opposite is true. The pupil should constrict. Hence, heroin users are often said to having pin eyes, with their pupils shrinking to the size of pinpricks. Hmm. So now every time you see that, cool shot. I'm gonna know it's wrong. It's wrong. Great. But a movie that is very factually accurate. Interstellar. Interstellar. She Do knows, I know my she shit? She knows her stuff. The black hole was so scientifically accurate it took approximately a hundred hours to render each frame. Holy shit. In the physics and VFX engine. Oh my god. Meaning every wow. second on screen took approximately a hundred days to render the Holy final copy. Shit. That's insane. They literally created a program to create like realistic black holes that they now use like in science. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. All right, I have a quick one for Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. What are you doing? Because I actually read this fact while we were filming that, but didn't say it. Oh. So it could be in this. That's right. So Mrs. Doubtfire is based on a book, but it was originally offered to Tim Allen as a movie version of Home Improvement. <laughs> Yeah, they were going to turn oh, Mrs. Doubtfire into a movie about Tim Allen's character from Home Improvement going through a divorce and getting back no. his family. No, and Tim Allen it. was the one who turned it down. Okay. Peter, I think I'm in final form. Although I can add something to make it a little more obvious, maybe. Or do you know who I am before I walk away? No, I don't know. All right, let me go get a little prop. Okay. I think I might know who you are. Are you from Knives Out? Yes! <laughs> I am! Christopher Plummer from Knives Out. Who's that? The actor who plays Harlan the... Thromby? Yes, Harlan. I am Harlan Thromby from Knives Out. Good job! You did it! I can put this knife down. Yeah, please do. Yay! Wait, did it hit you as I walked away? Yeah, I was just like, what movie could there be with a person? <laughs> Go girl. To be fair, I should be more bloody, but yeah. that level of blood to actually be realistic would be so much, it would just be all over the yeah. place, so. Fun fact about Knives Out, they actually had to digitally remove blood from the shot because it would have gotten a worse rating. Oh, so there you go. I toned mine down so that it wouldn't get a worse rating on YouTube. Yeah. Appropriate. That's great. So, that's who I am. Oh, wow, you can multitask so well. You're mm -hmm. on guard while kissing Peter. Yeah, she's really she's going for it. She's really into it right now. Yeah. Do you guys want a room? Alexa, play Careless Whisper. How many movies have you had ruined for you? Not many. It hasn't really ruined any. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I've learned a lot. We tried. Oh, I thought you were supposed to ruin him. He was supposed to. Trying. He failed. Give me your worst fact that you have okay. left. Ruin a movie for me, Peter. Sleepless in Seattle. Yay! Don't ruin this, actually. Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks only share approximately two minutes of screen time together. True, when she's stalking him, mm -hmm. and then at the end, when it all works out. Yeah. They shot that movie separately. Basically. Huh. Mark, my brother, was the second choice to play the son in Sleepless in Seattle. I've heard that one before. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was hoping you'd forget. No, but that is amazing. How life would be different from How first life? choice. Or maybe not at all. You guys know Mark from our ghost hunting adventures at Chateau Marmont and the, the Sleepy Hollow video. No. And Salem. Oh <laughs> shit, and Salem. Yeah. He's literally the one who the ghosts seem to attract. True. So. And he could have attracted a new wife for yeah. his widowed father. Yeah. All right, so I have like two more facts. Home Alone. Anthony's favorite movie, ruin uh, it. Shit. Really? It really is my favorite movie. It's my <laughs> guilty pleasure and just my outright pleasure. Yeah, I was gonna say that's not a guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. Buzz's girlfriend. Woof. Woof. <laughs> is a boy. It is the art director's son because they didn't want to ask a girl to play a character that they, that they knew would then. was going to be ridiculed. Oh, oh, that's actually sweet. He was like, I'll do it. He's yeah. like, just ridicule my son. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I do feel like I would have a very different perspective though if I found out later that that girl was very sad because she got nothing but teased after that. Yeah. Because that's true. If yeah. But his girlfriend really existed, everyone would say woof to her. Yeah. True. Forever. I mean, mm -hmm. it was the first thing out of our mouths. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a sweater that says it. So this is the last fact. Okay. Okay. Hit me. This is my last ditch effort. It's a fact about me. I have never seen Pretty Woman or Sleepless in Seattle. 
No, I've never seen either of those movies. I need a minute. <laughs> Wait, how, Peter, how in nine years of friendship, Peter, almost ten, have I never forced you to watch Sleepless in Seattle, at least? You've like put it on while you're doing something, but we've never sat down. So I've only seen literally clips of it while it's on in the background while you're doing something else. I've never seen Sleepless in Seattle or Pretty Woman. You ruined our friendship, but not any movies. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Yeah. Wow. I am stunned. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll change that. We will change that. And you've changed my view of so many movies tonight. Thank you very much. Okay, that's our video for this week. If you learned something new, tell me down in the comments which thing surprised you the most. If you know any other facts that we didn't include, please let me know down in the comments. And like this video if you should watch Sleepless in Seattle. And Pretty Woman. Bye! Bye. You're supposed to be a very rich man. I'm a very rich man. What's that, TikTok? And that's when I said, I am a rich man. You haven't seen that? It's very funny, whatever. No, I'm 32. I'm too over that, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>